Hey everybody, I just want to take this opportunity to first thank you for joining me wherever you might be right now, whether you're watching on your phone or your screen, on your computer screen or TV maybe, I'm not sure, but I just want to thank you for joining me today and for allowing me to join you wherever you might be. Um, you know, I guess I should introduce myself. Uh, my name is Jen Timberlake. Uh, I pastor Celebration Church Jacksonville along with my husband, Tim, as well as our location in North Carolina. And I wanted to come and talk to you today about this season of isolation. So first of all, let me tell you, I'm feeling a little nervous. This is the first time I've ever really shared um, any significant part of my own personal story and my own journey. So I'm feeling a little nervous, so bear with me. I hope you stick with me through this. Um, what you should know is that my journey didn't really start like the rest of uh, your average pastors or um, uh, people in ministry. I used to be an art director for a global sports marketing company and I ended up getting in an accident while I was working um, at one of my events and I ended up with a traumatic brain injury. So that's really the start of a very, very long journey that had me um, in a deep season of isolation. So the reason that I wanna to talk to you today is because I really felt that in this season where so many people find themselves isolated, maybe we can gleam a little from my journey and my experience in isolation. I really felt God laying on my heart some lessons learned in that time uh, that maybe you'll help somebody. So it started off after the accident, finding out that I had a traumatic brain injury, but unable to get the medical care I needed due to a variety of things, but um, a battle with workers' comp. And so I found myself in a dark room for nine months before finally being allowed to go and get therapy at a neurotherapy clinic, which ended up being another nine months of um, treatment and therapy to try and get me back to where you currently see me now. So through that, through that journey, nine months really isolated at home and then nine months learning to add two plus two and figuring out what colors I'm seeing and learning to be able to read again and trying to retain what I see. And there's still a lot of uh, health issues that I deal with, but through it, I've seen God be faithful. So I want to read this scripture to you. It's Isaiah 61.3. I'm sure some of you are familiar. Some of you might not be. So it says, For those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. You know, that scripture I've held on to so tightly because God really does give us beauty for ashes and joy for mourning. I have written here in my notes, he gives us beauty for ashes and joy for mourning. Even in seasons of deep grief, mourning, seasons of loss, pain, tragedy, isolation, and uncertainty, God exchanges those things for beauty. Loss for gain, tragedy for triumph, uncertainty for a certain hope. And it often takes our darkest moments for us to gain the perspective needed to see the light. And that's what I really found through my own personal story and my own personal journey, that it took for me the deepest and darkest season of my life for me to find the life that God has, had designed me to live. So I pray that in this time, we can really lean into him. And I want you to know that if you're watching this and you're not a believer or you've just started your journey with God and you're just kind of getting going with this walk with him, that I wasn't seeking God out when I got in my accident. I wasn't seeking God out even right after it, but he 
sought me out. He found me. He was always standing with his arms open, waiting for me to turn to him. And that brings me to my first point. It takes us being completely shaken to our core, out of our comfort, out of our own way of thinking, our own way of doing, and our own way of being for us to actually allow God to do what only he is able to do. And if you're with me, I want you to write this down. We become more open to miracles when we are in desperate need of them. We become more open to miracles when we are in desperate need of them. You know, often it takes us being so shaken and not being able to navigate the way ourselves for us to turn to something bigger than ourselves, for us to turn our lives to God and say, we can't do this without you. And that's where I found myself, you know, in a, in a place where I couldn't navigate the path. I couldn't, I, I was so blown by the winds of, of this life and so um, off course that I needed a, a desperate um, situation and, a, and it took a dark, dark season for me to find myself being willing to let God do what only he can do instead of us trying to maneuver and work things out for ourselves, I, I was thinking about this today. When we're in danger, we seek out a safe space. When we, when we feel a sense of danger, a sense of there's something wrong, we seek out a safe space to go. Well, in this season, I want you to know that God is that safe space. He is, he is waiting with open arms. His shadow covers us. His, his arms are open. His love is here to pour out over you when you're in this dangerous place, when you're in this season of isolation. I want you to know that. The next thing that I, I really felt in, in that season of isolation and now in this season, when all the distractions of the world are removed, the voice of God is magnified in our lives. For me, it took a brain injury, but I need to tell you that after that brain injury, something happened that obviously a certain part of my brain wasn't working, but the side of my brain that wasn't working was the side that allowed doubt and all doubt was removed. All negative thoughts were removed. I, I had a really hard time understanding things, but the one thing that I did understand was the voice of God and I trusted it. I heard him so clearly. So if you're writing things down, I want you to write this nugget down. It is up to us to tune in to his frequency. You see, when distractions are removed, God's voice is so clear, but it's up to us to listen for it. It's up to us to take the, take the time that we have to tune in to what he's saying, to hear his voice, his voice is clear for all who listen. It's like a radio. You know, sometimes we've got to tune that frequency. We've got to just turn it a little bit so that we can get a clear message through to us. And so it's up to us to just adjust our sails a little bit, adjust, adjust what we hear and adjust our lives so that we give him an, an opportunity to speak to us because he is always speaking to us. Revelations 3.20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and eat with him and he with me. In this season of isolation, I want you to know that God is knocking. He is always knocking. But maybe right now, maybe for the first time in your life, the distractions or the things that you have busied yourself with you're not able to do those things. And so maybe you're feeling that pull. Maybe you're feeling that, vo you're hearing that voice. And I want you to know, lean into it because he wants to spend time with you. He wants to tell you what he has for you. He wants to teach you who you are in him in this season. It's funny, I think 
about that season in my life and I literally was having to learn what two plus two was. I knew that I should know it, but I, I couldn't figure it out without counting it on my fingers. And I became like a child and I went through this, this testing while I was at neurotherapy and they told me I was testing as an elementary school kid. And my mind had become like a child. I used to say, I'm going to kindergarten. Every day I would go to my kindergarten and my neurotherapy where I had to relearn so much of what I once knew and what once came natural. But it reminds me of the scripture in Mark 10, 15. Truly I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And my next point here is to be like a child, is to be capable of receiving the fullness of the Father. Jesus taught that. We know that to be true because so often we get busied in our own minds and our own thought processes and, and even in our own daily lives, we become so busy and we're taking care of people and we don't think like a child anymore. But there's a beauty in, in that thought of a child to see a father the way he is designed to be seen. I think in this season, maybe we can learn from our children. Maybe if you don't have children, your nieces or your nephews or the little kid that lives next door. You know, some of the lessons I think our children can teach us is how to encourage one another and how to encourage ourselves. Our son, Max, he's three years old and just on the way here driving, he told me, mommy, I have a, a hole in my pants. Mommy, there's a hole in my knee. And I said, well, maybe we can cover it with a patch. It'll be okay. And he goes, mommy, that's a good idea. And I just thought like, wow, how he's so encouraging. He just offers encouragement freely. He also tells us when he has a good idea, which is often, but he tells us, mommy, this is a good idea. And he encourages himself and he encourages us. And I just wanna, wanna encourage you to learn from that. Encourage yourselves and encourage one another in this season. We're all doing the very best we can. I think we can also learn from our children how to play, how to just stop stop wor the worry, stop the, the anxiety, take a moment. And instead of worrying about what your kids are supposed to be learning or what you feel like you should be doing or using this time to start a business and maybe just play a game, play a game, go for a walk, just stop and see if you can take a moment to play, play with your kids and enjoy this time that we have together. Something else we can learn from our children is how to forgive and how to forget. It's funny. So in this season of quarantine, we've been potty training. And if nothing else, I thank God that we've been home long enough to actually potty train our son. But we had an accident a couple weeks ago and Max peed on the couch, which all you parents out there, I'm sure you've been there, but you're like, oh my gosh, and he's doing the best he can, but I knew that he, he knew he should have gone to the bathroom, but he was watching a movie and he didn't want to get up. So I said, Max, you know, you can't do that. And we had a very stern talk and a little discipline. And I couldn't actually believe how quickly he forgave himself and forgot about it. It was like, he knew he had done something wrong. He said he was sorry. He gave me a hug. And then right after it was over, he said, okay, let's go upstairs. And it was like, I wasn't ready to get over it. I had just cleaned up a mess on the couch and I felt the Holy Spirit check me like, hey, it's over, now move forward. And I think we have to do that with ourselves and in our own lives, not just for each other, but for ourselves too. And I wanna encourage you, what it, there might be something today that you haven't let go of, whether it's an argument with a spouse or a friend 
um, or a mistake that you yourself made and you haven't allowed yourself to heal from it. I want to encourage you, make the decision today to have a short memory. Learn from your mistakes, but then let them go. So those are some of the really beautiful things I think that we can learn from our children in this season. And if we can just watch them, I think that we can learn from them every day because there's something so special about being like a child. Um, I often think to myself how I miss that season of being like a child in my own mind. And as strange as that sounds, because it was a devastating time for me and it was so hard but there was also a beauty in it that and lessons that I could only learn in that season that brings me to my next point sometimes it takes trauma to reveal the pains of our past and the scars that have yet to heal I want you to write this down and I want you to ponder it Seasons of isolation and pause will often reveal the pains we've hidden away. Like I said a little bit ago, um, you know, there might be something that you've been holding on to. I know that in my own journey, it took a brain injury and an extreme trauma to reveal some other traumas in my life and tragedies that I had not even told anyone. Um, I had some deep pain that had not only, um, I had not only lived with that pain, but I had allowed it to shape decisions that I made, um, people I let into my lives. Um, I had, I had allowed that pain to guide steps of my life along the way. And I don't know who's out there listening to me today, but I know that all of us have pain in our lives that sometimes we hold on to longer than we're supposed to. And seasons like this can uh, elevate that pain in us, that seasons like this can almost unwrap that pain and it becomes fresh again because we're isolated and stuck with our own thoughts. I want you to know, though, in this season, though seasons like this will reveal the pain we've yet to let go of, it also gives us time to deal with and heal from those things that we've yet to mend. And so if you're out there listening to me today, I want you to know that you're not alone in this season. You're not alone in dealing with other traumas and tragedies and even maybe marital issues. I know that this season can be really hard. I have uh, an incredible husband and even us, I've found us arguing a little more, which we usually never do, but you're with somebody 24 seven in the house all the time. And for people who are already struggling um, in their marriage maybe, I know that this can be so hard, but I also want to encourage you. This is a moment in time where you can learn each other again, where you can forgive each other, where you can use this season to mend your brokenness and to become better through it. I also want you to know that it's okay not to be okay. Sometimes we try so hard to push through these seasons and just tell ourselves we're going to get through it. We're going to we're going to step into the next season. It, this is going to be over soon and we try to stay strong and we try to stay strong for our families and our friends and ourselves and we don't let ourselves feel what we're feeling, but I want you to know it's okay not to be okay. There are going to be moments in this season and in your life where you are not okay. There's going to be moments that we grieve, moments that we cry, moments that we feel scared, moments you feel alone, maybe empty or broken. And that is okay. That is 
the nature of humanity. You are human when you have those feelings. But I want you to know, I wrote this down right before I came here, so I wrote it on the side of my notes. I really felt God speak this to me. When we're broken, we stop holding ourselves together and we place the pieces of our brokenness into the hands of heaven. And I think there's something so beautiful about that, that we let go of holding ourselves together and pushing through, and we place our brokenness into the hands of God. And in his hands, he can do more healing, more comforting. He can give us peace that we could never give to ourselves. Through my season of isolation and through my season of, um, of, of really darkness, I found that the moments that I felt the presence of God the most were the moments where I were com was completely undone, completely undone, crying uncontrollably, feeling so broken that I didn't know if I could make it through, feeling confused of what my life would look like after this or what hope did I have. And in that brokenness, God met me where I was. And I think that it takes us allowing ourselves to feel those deep feelings of grief for him to say, I'm with you. You know, I, I, I'm reminded of this one moment of brokenness that I had. And it was before I went to neurotherapy, but it was um, while I was just in this dark room, uh, feeling confused, feeling like I was stuck behind a screen of fog, no one understanding what I was going through and myself incapable of communicating it. And I remember kneeling over my bed, praying, and just crying, crying out to God, crying, crying out to him in a um, place of desperation I had never found myself in before. And I remember closing my eyes, and I had this vision of this savior. It was like a silhouette, and I could see even though my eyes were closed, I could see it. And this silhouette got closer and closer until it completely blocked any light that I, that I saw because it was, he was right behind me. And in that moment, I felt the presence of God so strong, literally lay over me like a hundred pound blanket. I couldn't move. I couldn't get up. And he met me in that place of grief in the most powerful way. I had never experienced his presence in that way before, but I was, I was broken and I needed him and he was there. And I want you to know that no matter who you are or where you are on this journey with him, he will meet you in your brokenness. He is the Prince of Peace. He is the ultimate comforter, and he wants to be with you in your pain. He wants to be with you in your brokenness. He wants to be with you in your isolation. He is. You, we just have to allow him to do what only he can. There's, there's this, um, there's this concept or this there's this art form I guess I should call it it's called kintsugi and it's the Japanese art form of mending pottery and it is the art of repairing pottery with gold understanding that the piece is more beautiful after being broken so there's not a lot of people who practice this art but it's taking these broken pieces of pottery and filling the cracks with gold and putting the pieces back together. And after the gold has dried, you have this beautiful piece of pottery that is in the same shape 
that it was before it was broken, but now with these beautiful gold lines filling the cracks and the broken spaces of what was once broken. And I often think of my own life that way. And for a moment, maybe you can join me in, in, in seeing yours in that way too. And right now we're in a really difficult season. Humanity is at a standstill, fighting this virus, fighting this fight that's impossible to even see. And yet we see the brokenness and the isolation and the pain and the suffering all around us. But through these broken pieces, I believe that God, like the gold in this art form, can fill our broken pieces with his gold, can fill our broken spaces with his love, with his presence, and with his peace. And we can understand that after this is over, that our lives will be made more beautiful after being made broken because of the lessons, because of the love, because of what we've experienced through this season. I just want to share this with you um, to close. I've gotten written here, it says, we can come out of this season of isolation, of trauma and tragedy, this season of mourning, more full of hope, more full of joy, more full of peace. We can lean into the things of God, to his breath that fills our lungs, to his gold that fills our broken places. The breadth and depth of God's love is so great, it's uncomprehendable. I really believe that humanity is at a crossroads, that we've lost ourselves to things that ultimately don't matter. We've found worth in the form of accomplishments, looks, wealth, education, abilities, influence, likes, maybe something else. But in this moment in history, I believe we're being given the opportunity to re-engage with the things that do matter. Family, love, compassion, empathy, peace, kindness, hope, joy, and most of all, Jesus. Our worth is measured by the price that was paid on the cross, not by the things that we do. And I want you to know that through this season, you're not alone. We are in this together. And I look back on the season that I was in in my life and in that season of darkness and isolation, not knowing when or how I would come out of it. And there's still moments that I struggle. There's still pain that I feel daily. But the one thing that I do know is God never left me then and he won't leave me now. And I want you to know that too. He is with you in isolation. He's with you in quarantine. He's with you in good seasons and in bad seasons. He will never leave you nor forsake you. God is good and he will always be good and we can always lean into him. So if I leave you with one final thought, I pray that you would take this moment in time to lean into your creator, lean into the God that made you, put your life back in his hands and let him do only what he can do in this and through this season. Thank you all so much for joining me today. If I can, I just want to close this out in prayer because I want you to know that you're not alone. Father God, I just thank you so much, Lord, for whoever's watching this today. I thank you, God, that no matter where they find themselves, that you would cover them, that your love would pour out over them. Father God, I pray, Lord, you are the Prince of Peace. And so I pray for peace that surpasses all understanding. I pray, God, that you would fill the hearts and the minds of the men and women and children who are watching this, God. I pray, Lord, that you would fill them, God, with 
unimaginable joy. God, I pray that you would speak to them clearly. Help them to, to learn from their children. God, I pray that they would lean on you in seasons and moments of grief and pain. I pray, God, that what you're doing in us and through us, we will see you fill the cracks in our lives with gold. Mend us, God. Our lives are in your hands, and we pray that you would shape us as only you can. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, guys, and we'll see you again soon.